This program here is an interactive virtual globe and we mostly use it to look at four dimensional seismic data. And what I mean by that is that uh, we are looking at, for example, a global catalog of earthquake events from the last 100 years or so. And each of those earthquakes is uh, resolved as a point in three dimensional space defined as a position in longitude latitude on the Earth's surface and then a depth below the surface. So as I bring in this data set of earthquake events that I've just been uh, describing and it contains about 70,000 earthquakes, uh, on the first approximation you see here that all these points are on the Earth's surface and as I move this around a little bit you can see that if you're looking at only the, the map projection that you can tell that the points are very nicely following the tectonic plate boundary. So here we have a bunch of earthquakes going along the Aleutian Island chain. Here we have a bunch of earthquakes going down the Marianas. Here we have a bunch of earthquakes in the uh, in the Tonga Island chain, which is a subduction zone in the South, Pac South Pacific. But more importantly, as I mentioned, all of these earthquakes are four-dimensional data. So we have an event time and a latitude and a longitude and a depth. And the important way of looking at them, or the first important way of looking at them, is just as a, as a set of three-dimensional data. So in order to get a bit of a clearer view, I'm going to make the surface here transparent. And so now you can actually see, as I pick these up and move them over a little bit, that the earthquakes are not just on the Earth's surface, but they go down into the Earth's interior. So let me zoom in a little bit here. And I mentioned that this region that we're looking at here is the Tonga Island chain which is a large subduction zone where the former ocean floor of the Pacific Ocean coming in here from the right uh, hits the Australian plate which is here on the left and then it, the, uh, the Pacific Ocean dives underneath the Australian plate and what happens when the former ocean floor dives into the Earth's interior is that it bends and cracks and these bends and cracks are causing earthquakes so by recording the position of those earthquakes in 3D space like we do here we can see that they don't just happen randomly in the interior of the Earth but they have a very clearly defined shape and this shape allows Earth scientists to deduct the position and the fate of the subducting slab as it goes back into the Earth mantle this is very important to set up for example finite element simulations of the convection processes in the Earth mantle to understand what is driving tectonics and what is also causing earthquake events in the first place. But we are looking really at four-dimensional data here. So what that means is, as I go in and use my cursor to uh, to select some of these points, uh, I can query the information and you will see that, of course, these earthquakes haven't all happened at exactly the same time, but they actually happen at many at a at a variety of different times. So as I go in I can just touch any of these points here and I should mention maybe that the points are color coded by magnitude. The green ones are magnitude five and here we have a five point four from two thousand four and the blue ones are magnitude seven. Uh here we have let's see uh, if I select this guy here we have another one from nineteen eighty two uh and then here we have uh here we have another 6.1 from 2006. So you see that these earthquakes are all in the same spatial region, but they are all from very different times. So this is one way of looking at 4D data, but just projecting it into 3D space, and that allows us to see the shapes of uh, structures in the interior of the Earth, in this particular case, a subduction zone. But we can use the same data, the Global Earthquake Catalog, to look at the data in a more spatial sense by essentially playing back an animation of events happening over time and in order to do that I'm going to go over to the Indian Ocean here uh, to Sumatra to be more precise where of course you remember there was a very big earthquake on uh, Christmas 2004 which was one of the biggest earthquakes ever recorded and caused major destruction all around the Indian Ocean because it displaced a lot of ocean water and caused a tsunami now let's go uh, and look at this from the interior of the Earth and here you can see two red dots and uh, in the color coding red dots have very large magnitudes between 8 and 9 so as I touch this particular point up here uh, it is a magnitude 9 from 2004 December 26th so this is the primary event of the Sumatra earthquake and then you see there's another red one right down here which turns out is an aftershock that was caused by the primary earthquake and this one happened it's an 8.6 and this one happened in March 28, 2005. Now here we are still showing all the earthquakes in the same spatial region no matter from what time they happened but what I can do is I can bring up an animation dialog and that allows us to to play back earthquake events as they happen. So I bring this up and uh, just move it down here. Uh, 
and in order to get a little bit of a better idea I will select the magnitude 9 earthquake again come on alright there it is and then let's uh, flip this around again so we can look at it from the inside out okay and let's have a look at the entire at the entire island chain here and what I can do now is uh, I can use my animation dialog to select the speed at which I want to play back the events and this playback speed here is a logarithmic scale so as I drag the slider all the way over to zero uh, I'm going to play back events at 10 to the zero of the speed so one second in the program is one second in real time and as I drag it to four I'm going to play back the events at the 10, point 10 to the fourth which is 10,000 times exaggeration which means one second in the program is 10,000 seconds in real time and I'm going to set this to 4.5 which is uh, about one second in the program is give or take 10 hours in real time and then by clicking on the set time button over here I can take the time of that particular earthquake and copy it into my animation dialog and then by pressing the playback button I can playback the event but I'm going to first click on the scroll bar a couple of times to go uh, backwards a few days in time so that we can see not only what happened during the earthquake but also what happened before the earthquake and what I'd like you to do is have a close look at uh, the selected point uh, that I'm pointing at right here and as I'm playing this back we are currently on Christmas Eve 2004 you're seeing that there's complete silence nothing happening at all and then as the primary event happens everything happens all at once and uh, all of these earthquakes that we just saw were triggered in a matter of about a few hours so the combination of all these earthquakes plus the fact that the main earthquake was one of the biggest ever recorded is the cause for the displacement of major amounts of water which then moved around and sloshed around the Indian Ocean as a tsunami wave and caused that large amount of destruction all the way around the Indian Ocean and as I go back to the time and play back the main event one more time, if you have a close look at it, you can tell that the uh, that the main earthquake causes a rupture of two parallel fault lines that are in this picture going uh, going upwards, which in the real orientation is about north northwest, and that is a, a fault system that is about a thousand kilometers, about 600 miles long in total, and completely ruptured, triggered by that major earthquake in about a matter of a few hours. So the combination of all this was what uh, what caused the destruction here. So here we saw a second way of looking at this uh, four-dimensional data by uh, by treating the time as an independent dimension and just playing it back as an animation or as a movie. And the combination of those two, looking at all the events at the same time to see three-dimensional structures and then looking at the events over time as they happen, allow us to get a very good understanding of the processes in the Earth's interior that drive um, that drive plate tectonics and are the root cause for earthquakes as they are observed uh, at the Earth's surface.